Hi everyone, welcome to Monktoberfest, the Red Monk Brew Conference. We are in Portland, Maine, and uh, with me I have Matt LeMay, who is from Bitly. Matt, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So, Matt, uh, Bitly is a URL shortening service. Can you tell us quickly what that is? Absolutely. So Bitly is ostensibly a URL shortening service. You put in a long link and you get a short link back. But the really interesting thing about Bitly is what we do with those short links. So whenever somebody clicks one of those short links, we crawl a lot of metadata and we track those clicks. So there's an enormous nexus of cross-platform social data being generated around Bitly links and clicks on Bitly links. Okay, so I create a short link for something and I can go in and check afterwards on your platform and see who has clicked on it or where they've come from and how many other people have clicked on it and that kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. Now, at the talk this morning you gave, you talked about uh, kittens and chickens. Yes. Can you give me some relevance on that, please? <laughs> I certainly can. So, um, so we looked at this data set, this enormous data set, and tried to determine what links, what kind of content people were most inclined to share and what kind of content people are most inclined to click. Um, a share is more likely to reflect on your social identity because you're sharing it from your personal account, whereas a click is something which is done in the privacy of your own interaction with your computer. So what we found, which is really interesting, is that the kind of stuff that people share and the kind of stuff that people click are actually quite different. Um, the things that are shared tend to be tech articles, New York Times editorials, things that make you look smart. The things clicked tend to be things that are pretty dumb, but also kind of funny and awesome. So as a visual metaphor to represent this, I found a picture of a kitten wearing a chicken costume. The kitten representing who we are or what we click, and the chicken costume representing who we would like to be or what we share. Okay, so uh, I mean, th th this is this is uh, to my mind, this is fascinating because it, it speaks to the the whole uh, uh, masks that people tend to wear. Uh, it's just you're using it, you're doing it now on the internet. You're 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 showing one side of your personality, and this is a whole other side that's that's you know kept private, as you say, and kept to yourself. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think it's a new thing by any means for people to try to present one image of themselves. I actually I read from my high school diary um, during my speech. Which is funny because that was a part of myself, you know, the, the sort of super angsty, very teenage part of myself was a part which I tried very hard to suppress to the outside world, um, but was so fundamental to who I am as a person that I can't think of anything relating to my teenage self without that being front and center in what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and the other interesting thing that you said in the talk uh, was that uh, the online world now, the stuff that we're sharing now, uh, just coming back to your, your teenage diary, uh, the stuff that you shared in your teens is stuff that's kind of gone away apart from your diary. Uh, but the stuff that we're sharing now online is stuff that's there forever. Yeah, um, I, I meant to mention this and I didn't. They, so GeoCities, which was the original kind of personal homepage platform, got killed and deleted, but somebody did a backup of it. Somebody made a backup of these 650 gigabytes of GeoCities pages and shared it as a torrent file. So even when the stuff you've made gets deleted, somebody will still have it. The internet is persistent. So I think people are becoming more aware um, that whatever you put out there in the world is going to remain accessible forever. It's much harder to escape from yourself than it used to be. Fascinating. Is that, is that stuff that uh, you think people who are in their angst-ridden teen years right now are aware of? That's a good question. Um, one of the things I mentioned is that even though teenagers are ostensibly the social media generation, very few of them seem to be saying anything interesting enough on social media for us to be reading it. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're all on their, using their Facebook walls the same way I used my, my journal to express my teenage angst. But I think, they're, I think that if anything, teenagers today are more used to having a more... It's funny to say public, but they're more used to expressing their angst in a way which is geared towards other people as opposed to writing it in a journal which is meant to be kept you know, in the drawer by one's nightstand for the rest of one's life. So they're, they're putting on their, their cat costume when they're, uh, when they're talking online. Their chicken costume. Chicken costumes. <laughs> <laughs> True. Chicken costume. Easy, easy mistake to make. <laughs> okay. Super. Matt, that's been great. Thanks a million. Thank you very much.